evening to you. Welcome to the Lord's house. We've got so much to rejoice over and to thank God for. Sure enough. Well, we'll go ahead and get started tonight. I noticed my watch is gone, but I still got my glasses. We're still looking for an owner for these glasses right here, but I think I may have an idea. Somebody mentioned that it was Frida, but unfortunately Frida wasn't able to be here today. So once I find out from Frida, uh, maybe I'll get rid of the glasses too. But uh, it is true, we are into the lost and found. Uh, there's uh, lost people out there, and we're trying to find them. Say amen right there. Just what it is and the way it is. Thank God for the opportunity. Good to see you on the Lord's house tonight. We're going to start off by uh, bringing up some prayer. Uh, and uh, I, I got a message just a little bit ago from Tammy Ferguson, and uh, she was talking about one of her one of her little kids and, their, and everything, and, and uh, was getting sick and asked if we would pray for him, uh, baby Clayton. She said I was going to be there tonight. She said then all she found out this afternoon all that happened, and she's having to do a, a thorough clean over her her uh, daycare center and all like that. And so we're going to be praying for Baby Clayton right there, and also pray for the Fergusons too. Amen. And lift them up in your prayers. But uh, anyhow, uh, we want to do that. I mentioned this morning we were talking about uh, Brother Mike and Miss Sherry's uh, granddaughter, and we continue to pray for her. And then, of course, uh, Brother Bill, you went and you prayed for Miss Sherry's mother, which she's on her prayer list and everything. But uh, uh, the special prayer request this morning was for uh, Mike and Miss Sherry's granddaughter. And she's been having these seizures, and they're trying to find out what the problem is. And, Mike, I don't guess they've come up with any, any solutions on that yet, have they, Brother Mike? So uh, we pray that they will. Uh, be ultimately, we want God to heal it, and, and, and that's true. But uh, it would be nice to know where it's coming from, and uh, you know, it's it's like fixing anything. You got to get to the to the source, to the heart of where the problem is. And we pray that the doctors can do that and find that out. But then, uh, like I said tonight, Miss Tammy asked us to do pray for little baby uh, Clayton right there, and pray for that family. Uh, you know, it's I don't know about you, but uh, anytime my youngins are sick, it it, it 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 affects the whole home. It really does, and so especially when they're little like that. It's awful hard for them to respond or to reveal where where the real problems are, and so uh, we'll be very much in prayer for that, and then of course all the others that are on our prayer list tonight. But uh, I want to give you something out of the Psalm. Psalms 55 says, "Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication." We want God to hear us. We want God to respond to us, and the best way for us to do that is go to Him. The Bible says, "You have not, because you." And then when, a lot of times when we do ask, we ask amiss. Why? Because we're trying to consume it upon our own lust. So we want to ask God, and we want to do it the right way. And so in that, we want to go to him in prayer and seek his face. Let's pray. Now, Lord, as we bow before you, we thank you for the privilege and the honor to be able to come to thee and know that you hear us. Lord, we are so grateful for this opportunity. We're thankful for each and every one who's come tonight. We are, we are asking for healing of the land. We're asking that you put your hand of protection upon this nation uh, and, and heal us, dear Lord. Turn us back to you. Uh, we do pray for that. We're praying that, uh, Lord, you help us through these difficult days ahead. You give us the uh, uh, give us the things that we need to seek your face. Now, Lord, also I pray, uh, as I uh, mentioned tonight about baby uh, Clayton here, and I pray that you'll touch the, uh, this, this baby and heal this baby, but also be with his family and help them through this difficult time. And I pray, Lord, that you just touch and be with them, be with the, the Fergusons, Lord, and as... Uh, they're having to deal with what they're having to deal with there. And, and I pray, Lord, that you just bless them that. Then, Lord, I think about the answer to tonight is uh, their granddaughter. And it is. It is difficult any time you have a loved one that is in uh, uh, ailments and in, 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 in trouble and, 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 and with physical health and things like that. But, Lord, they're not knowing. They're trying to find out what's, uh, what's really causing the problem. And I pray, Lord, that you'll give the answers that we need. And, but, Lord, we're also asking for healing power upon them. And, of course, there's others that are on our list, such as Miss Sherry's mom and many, many others. I don't want to leave anybody out, but, Lord, uh, we've got many on our prayer list tonight. But we pray that you'll touch and you'll heal and that you'll help us in the process. And, Lord, we come tonight needing that, uh, both in this service and then we're looking forward to the fellowship afterwards. But, Lord, all these things will be done to glorify and to please you and help us, dear Lord, to grow this church and to prosper it, that the things that we do and the things that we say and the places that we go will be pleasing and glorifying to you. But let us be a light, uh, and, and make an impact, and reach out to those we come in contact with and love them the right way. 
Thank you, Lord, for these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother John. He got it that time, didn't he? I still tell you, though. <laughs> he won't. He, w he won't let me live that down. I, I know how that's going to be, but let's see. Tomorrow's Monday, so uh, since I didn't get to go eat lunch today, you owe me a few laps around the back of the building back there, so you got to go back there with me because that way we can talk. You got so, that Danny uh, Christian from Oxford. Well, you call him your son, and you said I was your brother, so. Well, I, the you got him back there, we, we, we can do that. But also tonight, he's going to tell you in a little bit that we're going to go back in the back back there tonight, and they got a bunch of stuff back there. I've done seen it, okay? It <laughs> looks good. But also, just to let you all know tonight, the sound is still the same as it was the night that we had the uh, movie back there. So we have not changed it yet. So don't get excited when you hear it. We haven't got it changed yet. We're working on that. And I had a couple that come up to me and asked about how come we have to have the preacher so loud up here sometimes. Let me explain that to you real quick. We have a little box back there in that sound booth that has to go directly to the computer that goes to the camera. And for the people out there to hear, we have to turn it up sometimes because it's one of those things you can only go so high on it, okay? So we have had to cut him up a little bit. So we apologize for that, but we are working. Tomorrow, hopefully we'll have a young man that's going to come here tomorrow we're going to go upstairs up there and we're going to look around to see about doing away with these where they won't just be blaring at you all the time. They'll actually be right over the top of your heads. Then we'll be able to cut everything there down and be able to let that other study up, okay? So I, hope, I know that sounds weird, but that's what we've got to do. So we apologize. And like I said, when we started this, the pastor and I, this is a work in progress. And we're always striving to do better, amen? So y'all just bear with us, and, and we'll do what we can. The Lily of the Valley, page 240, if you would stand with us, please. I have found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The Lily of the Valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every day of him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my ransom taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation, he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him forsaken, and all his idols torn. From my heart, and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. Will I slide by faith and do his blessed will? A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna, he my hungry soul shall fear. Then sweeping up in glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Amen. I see some of y'all smiling out there. It's been a long time since we've done that song, haven't we? Hey. Amen. Page 303, my favorite section. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this day. Behold, he's thine. 
that God is in control because if it was in my hands I'd screw it up say amen right there but God knows what he's doing and because of what God's doing we can rejoice and we can thank God for that opportunity As a matter of fact as I'm looking forward to what we're going to do tonight after the evening service Brother John's right we're going to go into the back back there and I'm looking forward to watching uh, the documentary with you now I've seen it I've seen it and uh, I hope and pray you all get a great blessing from it. I think that you will when you sit down and watch it tonight. And then, of course, as we're looking forward to Friday night, and I am too, uh, because I always love to get together with God's people. And Brother John, he's talking about the, you know, the lunch, you know, the deal at lunch and all like that, and talking about the laps and all like that. Well, you know, sometimes there's casualties at lunch. I was sitting there today, and I hit myself right in the eye when I squeezed my lemon. <laughs> Amen. Casualties, you know. And when you do it to yourself, Miss Kate, it's just what it is, you know, glutton for punishment, I guess. But anyways, but I do look forward to getting together with God's people and the fellowship and the and just just the the, the camaraderie that we have, you know, just the you know the, the back and forth. You know, Brother John, he was trying to give me a hard time this morning by saying brother. Like brother doesn't mean that you know we're what we're not brothers anymore. We just you know severed. So you betcha, you betcha. You know it's just what it is, and so I do enjoy getting together with God's people. You're my family, and I mean that. That's more than just words. I do mean that. I pray for you. I, I lift you up in prayer all the time. Uh, you know, listen. I, and I truthfully, I'm. I don't say this because I'm trying to feather my cap or nothing at all. Y'all know I put a lot of time in up here. Y'all know I do. But I do it because I believe in what we're doing here. That's why we do the things that we do. That's why we're going forward the way that we're going forward, because I believe in what we're doing here. I believe, Brother Mike, it's important to keep them doors open back there. Amen. Uh, because, uh, you know, we are that light on the hill. You know, Brother Bill, that city that cannot be hid. And so as we do go forward, Miss Joyce, you know, together is, is a key factor there in being together. And so Friday night, as we're looking forward to the fellowship and celebrating, you know, I can't think of a better way to celebrate Valentine's Day, the day of love. I can't think of a better way than the people that we do love, and that's coming together. Amen. And, of course, that night, some were saying, well, now, preacher, you need to probably make it very clear and everything. I will. I'll make it clear. Here's the deal. Like I said, when I go to dinner, like my daddy always used to say, when I go to dinner, when I go to supper, we all go to supper. Amen. When I go to pay, we all go to pay. You know what that means? That means everybody's got to ante up on their own. Say amen right there. And you say, you know, you know why I had to say that? Because Danny got kind of scared thinking everybody was going to be looking to him to pay for it. <laughs> I'm like, Danny, ain't, ain't nobody going to think that you're going to pay for all, all the people. Amen. But I, I said, all right, Danny, you know, he, he'll do that to you. He'll kind of worry you to death. I said, I'll let him know. I'll let him know, Danny. But anyways, but if y'all can, if y'all can find a way to squeeze dollars out of Danny, Y'all let me know, all right? Y'all do that? Okay, Sam, you let me know because I've been trying to do it ever since I've been here, and uh, it, it just ain't happened yet. But anyways, it is good to be able to go out and fellowship and have that, and I'm looking forward to that. Also, we uh, have on our agenda between here and the end of the month is Bible being put together. And I don't know about you, but I enjoy that too. And it's another time for us to get together. We do that on the last Tuesday of the month. And... Uh, can you believe that we're already getting like uh, halfway through this month? You know, wow, it's amazing how time is just ticking away. But, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that and putting the Bible together between here and the end of the month, last Tuesday of the month. 
And these are the things that we have on our list. But we're going to start, by the grace of God, we're going to start to every, at least once a month, have a movie night. And uh, we get in this big screen out back, uh, you know, on the wall there, and I enjoy that. It, man, it is looking good. Y'all see it tonight. You'll see what I'm saying. It, it is, and we're working on the sound uh, part of it, making it better. Amen, Brother John, both in here and back there, and getting those things. But I'm also looking forward to this, and I'll just kind of put this on the table for you so that you kind of know where things are going. I'm looking forward to when the weather changes. And we're already talking about uh, sunrise service for Easter Sunday, amen. And we're also looking at not only that, but we're also looking at where we can move some of our operation outside to where hopefully eventually we'll have a Friday night get-together. And you say, why in the world is that? Because we've got a screen that we're putting together. It's a 10 by 10 screen that we're putting together that we can move outside. So when the movie night and everything, we can take that outside also with pitching of the horseshoes and things like that. Because one thing I'm a firm believer in, brothers and sisters, you say, why do we do this? A family that fellowships together grows together. If all you ever see each other is on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night, how much do you really know about those people that you go to church with? The more that you come and you fellowship together, the more you learn about each other and the more that you care one for another. Amen. The more time you spend together, the more you get drawn closer together. And I'm a firm believer in that, and, and I've seen it work firsthand. Matter of fact, Brother Tim, you know, spent a little bit of time together in the last uh, two and a half years I've been here. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. You know, Brother John, he kind of gives me a little hard time and everything, but you know why he does? Because he spent some time around me. <laughs> Amen. Sure enough, we, we get to know each other. We get to spend some time together, and the more we do that and the better, uh, the better we get acquainted with each other. And, and here's the thing, the more you get to knowing about each other and everything, the more apt you are to lift each other up in prayer. The more that you are to get concerned one for another, the more that you, you, know, that you, that you get in where your heart is opened up one to another. And that's what Bible, the Bible's talking about right there. You see, in that early church, when you look at the success of the early church and why it grew and why it, why it flourished and everything, because they met daily. Amen? They went house to house daily what they did and so they spent time together and, and so God's about that coming together and so we thank God for the opportunity now with all that being said how many of y'all glad God still sits on his throne amen amen but Tim you come on you ask the blessing on the offering tonight and uh, we'll go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer You know, on that deal about coming together and having fellowship, I went and did a church, uh, I went and candidated at a church down in Paris, Texas, uh, years and years ago, and uh, when I, I was talking to them about how I like to get around, you know, God's people and fellowship with them and everything, and to them that was a foreign concept, you know, and it shocked me, you know, because to me it's normal for me to be around my people, and, but to them it was like strange because in their minds, the preacher is over here and the congregation is over here and they never interacted. You know, that, that, I don't know how you live like that. If we're family, and we are, uh, family supposed to hang out together. Say amen right there. I just, I just don't, I, I don't get it any other way, Lauren. I, I really don't, you know. I, 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 matter of fact, good to see you tonight, Brother Lauren. Matter of fact, uh, I, don't guess, I don't guess you've been here since I almost drowned you. 
right? Glad you did. Glad you did. Amen. No, nah, he's, he's trying to pull himself down. I'm like, come get back up here, brother. I got you. Right? Y'all might have seen it that night, that Wednesday night and everything. Nah, that was a good thing, brother. It, I went and I was, uh, somebody put a, put a little laughing face at that uh, uh, the other day. It's big, you know, several days after, after uh, your baptism. I, so it caught my attention. I said, well, I'm going to go back and just kind of rewatch it again and everything. And, uh, well, it was kind of funny. It sure enough was. Go back with me to the book of Philippians in chapter number 4. Philippians in chapter number 4. When I start to think about how big God is, I start to think about how good God is. Not only am I serving a big God, Kim, I'm serving a good God. And God is good. And all the time, amen. Verse number 19, but my God, that's ownership. That's ownership right there. Who he is and who I am to him. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would be with us tonight, be in the message tonight as only you can. Lead, guide, and direct. Help us, heal us, guide us, and direct us. Thank you, dear Lord, in Christ's name, amen. My God is a big God. I go to him because, Brother John, I know I'm going to get the right thing from him. You see, like I said this morning, that if he's only a God of salvation, and if we think of him that way, then we're limiting him in the process of that. Well, the truth of the matter is, he's not just the God of salvation, he's much more than that. There's a big long list that you've probably seen in certain churches across the country that gives the different names of the Lord. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. You've seen names like Elohim uh, and Jehovah and Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. And every one of those names means a different thing. And in that, as we begin to examine the names of the Lord and who and what he is, he has a lot of different positions that he plays in our lives. And the more and more that we look to the scriptures, we find out who this God is that we're serving, that we're worshiping, that we're believing in. Matter of fact, I, 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 you know, I know tonight is the Super Bowl, and a lot of people are focusing and tuning in on the Super Bowl. And I watch uh, over the years, Brother John, as they would go across that end zone and he, he'd get on the other side of that end zone, and he'd turn and he'd do something like this, and point to the sky. And automatically, everybody's assuming that he's talking about our God. But do you realize there's a lot of people that worship a lot of different gods out there? But there's only one God that is the real God that's above all gods, and that's the God of creation. That's the God that is Elohim, and Jehovah Jireh and the Jehovah Nisi and so on and so forth. The God of all creation, our Savior, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. And so when we realize and understand this God that we're talking about, it means that much the more. In Matthew chapter number 19 and verse number 16, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do to me that I may inherit, uh, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. So this good God that we're talking about here tonight, Lord, he is one and only God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the, the commandments. Now what are we talking about? What good God are we talking about? Go with me to, to the 23rd Psalm, if you will, tonight. Psalms 23. And look at it with me. In Psalms 23, we see in the scriptures here, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't want him. That means that he supplies my every need. Amen. That's what that means. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Meaning, I'm not lacking in anything because my God supplies all my needs. He goes on and maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now, I don't know about you, I grew up on a farm. 
Uh, how many of y'all in here grew up on a farm? Let me ask you a question. What kind of pastures would you rather have? Green, amen. Hey, that's a pasture that will produce. It's a pasture that cows would like to eat in. Say amen right there. What God's talking about here is he's not giving us something dead. He's giving us something that's alive. Green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now then again, do y'all want those waters to be real rough and choppy? Or can you drink out of those still waters a lot better? Say amen right there. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When I start talking about the goodness of God and how good God is to me, I start thinking of all the things God is to me. And by thinking that way, and, and really, uh, Sister Owens, when I realize who God really is, it makes me have a little better pep in my step when I walk in this world. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. <whistles> Bring it on. Bring it on. Hey, my God's able. My God's a big God. And the reason I can walk and talk and do the things I can, Miss Kay, because my God is a good God. He's a big God, and he's capable to go above and beyond anything I say, think, or do. Read on. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. There is no lacking with God. He takes care of his. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy. Huh? Do you realize how good God is? It shows how big of a God we really serve. I don't know about you, but I've seen people go at it. And at times, I'm thinking grown people ought not behave and act that way. Matter of fact, I've seen them act in such a way, Brother Ed, that they were very petty in their actions. Amen. And then all of a sudden, somebody would reach, uh, uh, or, or somebody, somebody would uh, holler out and say, Hey, who's going to be the bigger one here? Who's going to be the bigger one here? You realize God doesn't get drugged down into our little petty things? Amen? You understand that his goodness, his greatness, who God really is, his attitudes and his actions towards us? When you look at what his disciples did time and time again, by not trusting him, by not relying upon him, by not obeying him with their actions. And time and time again, what did God do? He delivered them out of their troubles. Now, I don't know about you, but how many times have we said, boy, if it was in my hands, I'd fry them. Hmm? Come on now. But not God. Uh -uh, no, sir, no, ma'am. Hey, what God does he has a heart. He's long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish. That's the God I serve. Why? Because he's a good God. He's long-suffering to us, word. He cares. He has a heart. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter in chapter number 5. In verse number 6. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 6, the Bible says, Humble yourselves. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he, may, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Put it all on God. Why? He cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom? Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Knowing, knowing these things. But the God of all grace. But the God of all grace. Y'all listening tonight? You paying attention? But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he, after that ye had suffered a while, make ye perfect, establish, 
strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know what he does? He comes in and fixes the problems. He calms the storms. He makes things right. Say amen right there. You see, I serve a big God because he's so good to me. He's so good to me. You see, preacher, how do you know he's a big God? Number five, because my cup runneth over. You know what I don't need to do? I don't need to limit God. In Psalms 23, verse number four, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my, my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Now, what I don't need to do is I don't need to limit God. I don't need to limit God. I start to think about what I do in my own personal life. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm not going to pick on you, Sherry. I'm going to pick on me. I'm not going to throw it over on you, Melissa. Not going to do that. No, sir. No, ma'am. Uh, no, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to talk about me. Got an electric bill, too. And I ain't got no money. And how in the name of God am I ever going to have that, that money to pay that electric bill? I don't know where it's going to come from. I start shaking and quaking and start trying to figure it out, try to come up with it. Oh, you know the one thing I haven't done? Hmm? Sure didn't go to my knees about it, did I? Hmm? Now, that's real easy to say on the electric bill. And thank God I have money in my pocket to pay my electric bill. But how many things do I do in my life that that same scenario plays out time and time again in the circumstance and the situations that I find myself? see, the fact of the matter is, I've had people even tell me, God, he's busy. He don't care about my little, you know, my, my little things out here. Do you realize that God has numbered the hairs of your head? Do you realize how valuable and how important you are to God that he knows every little detail about you? He knows more about you than you do. Amen? He knows you at your darkest, deepest part of you, and in spite of that, he still loves you. Now, when we understand how big God we serve and how big God is to us, I'm going to tell you, if all you've ever thought about God is he's the Savior and that's it, he's much more than that. We ought not limit God. We ought not limit God. I've had people actually tell me, Miss Kay, he, he's, a bit, he's got all this stuff on him. I don't want to put no more on him. Let me ask you a question. I said it this morning. I'm going to reiterate it tonight. How many of you know how many people are in this world? Can any, anybody help me out with that one? What is it? Think about that. I'll take your numbers. I think it's more like 8 billion, but it, whatever. anything over 1 billion has to be quite a bit. Amen? But it's 8 billion something. It's 8 billion something. Now, 8 billion. 8. That's in the world right now. We've been here like 6,000 years. How many people do you think has been here since the beginning of time? Hmm? And do you realize that each and every one is unique in their own way? Y'all with me tonight? And we yet think is not big enough to take care of our every need. Y'all help me out with this real quick. Read to me. Brother Mike, you got it pulled up right there, verse number 19. Read that verse right there to me right there, please, brother. Oh, I got your back. All right, well, hold your spot, Peter. Who's got, who's, who's got the text pulled up right, right quick? Verse number 19. Write the text. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. You got it? All right, Gene. Read it to me. Whoa, ho, hey, ho, whoa, no. Did you really say what you just said? I'm sorry if I gave you a heart attack. God will fix that too, amen. Show it up, give it to me. Say it again, listen to her. Whoa, my God shall supply. It's a small word, but 
covers a lot of ground. All. A L L. All. Now y'all tell me, I, I I went to Warren County Senior High. I didn't go where y'all went to school, some of you. But anybody else in here that went to Warren County Senior High? So I guess I didn't go to the same school with any of y'all in here. Amen. But does where you went to school and where I went to school, does all still mean the same thing? Y'all help me. Where, where'd you go to school at, King? Franklin County. Did all mean what I think it means? It covers everything. Wow. Well, I was worried about that. I was really worried about that. So all means all. But we, do we take God at his word? Do we really trust him in that? Read it again, Junior. But my God, read it. Read it to me, kid. I won't give you a heart attack this time. Preacher, I believe Jesus can save me and take me to heaven when I die. Check that off the list. But we ought not stop there. He doesn't stop there with us. He goes above and beyond, remember? And because of what he does, he gives us the ability to go above and beyond us. Let me ask you a question. How many of y'all believe God's word? In John chapter number 12, write it down. John chapter number 12, Jesus is talking to us, and what he tells us there is that we can do greater works than what he did. <whistles> what? Y'all believe God's word? He said we can do greater works than these. And greater works than these shall ye do. Huh? Really? Yeah. You know why? Because he also said that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know why you can do greater works? Because of the Holy Spirit of God within us. Amen. Gives us the power that we need to overcome the things that are in our lives. Amen. To give us the power that we need to do the things that we do day in and day out. Why? Because God wants to do great things with his children. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How many of us in here as parents want to see our kids do better than us? Where do you think you got that little temperament at? From the Father. Say amen right there. He wants us to do greater than he does. Now back to the scriptures right there. He shall supply how many of our needs? Our needs? All of them. All of them. And the reason that's so important, brothers and sisters, because my cup runneth over. It doesn't stop. We ought not limit God. We ought not take and limit God and what God's actions and his abilities are. Look, he told his disciples, y'all know this just as well as I do. When he walked out through there and saw that fig tree, and he was talking to them about that fig tree, he was talking about that little seed, a grain of mustard seed. Y'all remember all that? And he said, if you just had that little grain of mustard seed faith, you can say under that mountain, be what? Be cast down, and it shall be. What he's saying here is that it will take God at his word and trust him in what he says, live accordingly, he'll show us great things. But we're the ones that hold back, and we're the ones that limit God, and we're the ones that are the problem. And when we start getting this thing straight, let me ask you a question. How do we go to God? When we got a loved one laying there sick, how do we go to God? Do we really believe in what we're praying about? Do we really trust God and take God at his word? Talked to Val yesterday. She, she, she said at the end of her conversation, she said, well, you said I am your miracle. I said, because you are, Val. Let me ask you all a question. Is Val on the upside of the dirt or on the underneath side of the dirt? 
Y'all realize when I came here, she was looking to die. You know why she's still here? Because God answered my prayer. I'm not saying he didn't answer your prayer. I just believe in my prayer. Because I trusted God and took God at his word. And I, I put it in the hands of God. And I asked God to do that. And guess what, Brother John? It's panned out. Just like God said it would. I've seen it time and time again. I'm not trying to feather my cap. I'm saying I've got a big God that supplies. He goes above and beyond. He gives us what we need. And we as God's children need to stop limiting God. The reason why we're struggling is because we're not trusting. The reason why we're struggling is because we're not looking to him for the answers. We're not relying upon him for the solution. My God, casting all your care upon him. Appreciate you being there, Brother Mike. Read with me, everybody. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he, he may devour, whom resisteth steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions that are accomplished uh, in, your brethren, or in, in your brethren are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by, Jesus, by, by Christ Jesus, hath uh, uh, Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now why is that so important? Because when everybody else is freaking out, it's time for you and I to step up and challenge. I told you a week ago, and I meant exactly what I said. If you ever come to this church and you see me in the fetal position, you might better run for the hills. But I'm here to tell you, I don't expect for that to ever happen because my God is a big God. Is it going to get worse? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's going to. It's going to. I've never told you anything other than. Have I? Have I? But what I know is, God will see us through. And I've told you that all. I reminded you of the land of Goshen. The reason that's so important is because God always has a way to provide a way of escape for his people. So when we're looking to God, we're trusting in God. What is that key word that he said right there, Brother John? Stable. Stable. And what we as God's children need to learn to do in these times that we're finding ourselves in is that we become more and more stable. And the only way that's going to happen is that, Brother Sam, we get into the Word of God, we start taking God at His Word, trusting Him, and leaning not to our own understanding. And when we do that, that will make us more solid in the days that we're finding ourselves in. So that's why it's so important. You see, what God gives us, it just keeps overflowing. It just keeps overflowing. How many of y'all remember the story of Elisha and the widow and her son? And every time they went to the barrel, there was a meal in there. It never ran dry. It never was lacking. It always had what they needed for that day. Amen. So when we exercise this faith, taking that step, guess what you get to see? Once you take that step, your next step. Then you take that step. What do you get to see? Your next step. So you take that step. What do you get to see? The next step. And time and time again, and guess what? He's leading you. You look back and say, wow, look where I've come from. Even though I don't see all that's out in front of me, I look back across that, wow, how God led me every step of the way. And that's why we trust him. That's why we depend upon him. Why? He's a big God. And that's what's needed. Look with me. The sixth thing tonight. The Bible says in verse number 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The sixth thing I want you to see tonight, Brother John, is that he delivers. Home but you, but that means a lot to me. God don't just say things, God delivers with things. 
go back and look at the scriptures here. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He will deliver. And Psalms 36 and verse number 8 says it like this. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasure. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light shall we see light. Oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come, upon, uh, come against me, and let not thy hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Now, what are we talking about here tonight? Well, it's like he said. For those of us that trust in him and that look to him, he's going to deliver. He's going he's to do exactly like he says he's going to. He keeps his word. And when I trust him and I rely upon him, boy, Brother Tim, how I get to see his hand in a mighty way. Jude 1, 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You know what that means? He's going to live up to it. He's going to live up to it. He's the one that's able, incapable, to go above and beyond. Look, my God follows through. When he told me in his word that he will never leave me nor forsake me, should I trust that? When he told me in his word that where he is, there will I be also, should I trust that? When he told me in his word that he gives me my daily bread, does he do that? You see, the more and more I look to him, Miss Kay, and the more and more I trust in him, and the more and more I find out about him, I'm telling you, wow, what a God I serve. And so it rejoices my heart. It blesses me in such a way that it makes me thankful. In Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 5 says, and Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. That the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalm and hymn and spiritual songs and seeking with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Kind of reminds me of a story of a man that was a black man that was a sharecropper. And in the process of it, this black man who was a sharecropper, he loved the Lord. He was a believer, and in the process of it, his farmer that uh, owned the land and everything, he watched him, he studied him day in and day out, and he went to him one day, and he says, Hey, Charlie, he says, I don't understand. He says, uh, I'm the guy that owns all this land and everything, and he says, you're always praising God and singing, and you've got a, you got a pep in your step, you've got, you got a song in your mouth, I mean, you, you're always happy. He said, I, I just don't get it, I don't understand. He said, well, Mr. Boss Man, he said, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He said, I don't get that. I don't understand. He said, how can I get what you got? He said, well, Mr. Boss, man, you see that old wallering hole over there where the hogs are over there wallering? He said, yeah, I see that. He says, well, you got to go and get in that wallering hole over there. Ah, well, as time went on, all of a sudden it began to be a bad winter and, uh, and things began to happen. He began to lose his crops. The sharecropper did and Boy, it started getting kind of tough on him. Not only that, but the kids started to go hungry and disease started to set in. And one by one, his kids began to die off. Before all was said and done, before the springtime rolled around, even the sharecropper's wife passed away. And the farmer was still watching Charlie and he was still studying him and Charlie still was praising God and still had the right attitude and the right temperament about him. So he came to him. He said, Charlie, he said, I don't get it. He said, I could understand when things were going good, why you was having the attitude, because, uh, you know, you didn't start off with much. And he said, but 
now as things are going bad and you've lost your crops and, 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 and your kids have died and your wife now, she's dead and you're still singing and praising God. I don't get it. I don't understand it. He said, Mr. Boss Man, he said, you see that wallet hole over there? He said, yeah, I do. He said, you've got to get in that wallet and look. He said, Charlie, are you serious? He said, Mr. Boss Man, you've got to get in that wallet and look. And as the farmer looked at Charlie, he wanted what Charlie had. And he said, all right. He said, that's what it takes. He said, I'll do it. He started to walk over there, pull his jacket off go to get into that mud mud hole over there. Charlie said, hey, Mr. 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 Farmer, he said, but you don't have to get in that water. You just have to get in that water. You see, the things of God, God makes it easy. Matter of fact, God said in his word, his way is easy. His burden is light. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. All God's looking for is somebody willing to accept. Just willing to accept. Take God at his word. Take God at his word. Just willing to accept. I knew of a church down in Louisiana. Some of the craziest people you will ever meet. Backwoods. They do a lot of that, uh, I don't know if y'all ever been around those people that, that work out in those oil fields down there. But they're pretty crazy people. One I know, Brother Don Dissentil. Matter of fact, the night he got saved, he was running from the law. I believe there's a statute of limitations, but for those who tune him in and everything, he's long past the statute of limitations. He's running from the law that night. Matter of fact, lost his shoes. So what he did was he was swimming across the river. And let me explain something other to you. Down in the river he was swim, swimming across down there in Louisiana, there's gators in that river. Gators. Gators. And he knew that if he didn't hurry up and get across that river down there, them gators going to get him. Ain't nobody going to find Don ever again. But he ain't staying on that side of the river because that law dog's going to get him and they're going to take him and he ain't coming out of that jail. It's pretty much a rambunctious dude back in those days. He's running from the law and he's got to get to the other side of the river. He jumps in, he swims, he gets over to the other side of the river. He gets over on the other side of the river, he runs out there and he comes across a preacher. Met up with the preacher that night. See, Don, you got scared. The circumstance and situation of his life had, had him twisted upside down. The preacher that night led him to the Lord. Shortly thereafter, God called him to be a preacher himself. Well, they started out of a trailer down there. Now, th they're roughnecks. Worked in the oil fields in the roughnecks. When I met Brother Don, I met him down in Texas. And what really stood out to me about Brother Don was not his education. Because he didn't have much. Not him being polished. <laughs> Wasn't none of that there neither. Was the simple fact is he took God at his word. So they started meeting out of that trailer. They went and started adding on to that trailer a little bit because they get start, you know, started getting some uh, people coming. I mean, it started growing a little bit, you know. And for the longest time, that church with a little add-on to that trailer was their church. And when I met him, and like I said, his whole congregation, because I've invited him up to preach my mission conference, when I pastored in West Tennessee, 
his whole congregation loaded up in their pickup trucks and came up to West Tennessee when Brother Don preached my mission home. Got their own hotel rooms down there. See, because they're a bunch of roughnecks. They all come out of the oil fields down there. Made good money. Made real good money. But they loved the Lord. They loved their pastor. And when it came to dollars, they didn't mind when the offering plate went by. God says 10% belongs to the Lord, but we want to give God more than 10%. And they started chunking it in there. They weren't worried about a building, no sir, no ma'am. That trailer and the add-on sufficed. They were happy with it. And for the longest time, they were more concerned about supporting missions because they heard somewhere or another that a preacher said, y'all need to be supporting missions. And so what they started doing is they started taking on missionaries. And every dime that they had come into the mission, Brother Boy, they were sending it right back out. Now, when I met Brother Don, they had a mission budget at that rinky-dink little church building down there of over $150,000 a year. Didn't have a brand new building. Didn't matter to them. They loved the Lord. And all they knew was God wants us to give. We're going to give. And they kept giving and they kept giving. Well, eventually, God blessed them, and they were able to build a building. Over the years, it's been several years now that I've talked to Brother Don, I've lost track of him. Last I heard, he was still serving God, still loving God, still doing what he was called to do. Now, what are you doing, preacher? I'm saying he took God at his word, and he's about to show you himself in a different way. If maybe the reason why we're struggling, maybe the reason why we're going through what we're going through, maybe it's because we're not taking God at his word as we ought to. He's a big God. He's a good God. He's a God that wants to deliver. The question is, are you a willing vessel willing to allow him to use you in such a way? Now before you answer, before you respond, it's easy to say. It's a lot much more when you live under it. Here's Brother Don, and what he did is he just took God at his word, and God used him in a mighty way. He didn't have the schooling behind him. He didn't have all that polished stuff, Brother Sam. All he did was had a Bible, OKJV, okay, praise the Lord, that he believed in and he trusted and he looked to the Lord and said, God, I will do whatever you want me to do. And he did. And it came off, Brother Mike, in such a fashion that anybody that ever meets him, you know that's a real feller right there. He just, he just took God his word. I just love the Lord. You know, God ain't asking us to get in that mud hole. He's asking us to be willing to follow him no matter what. And when we get to that place where we're willing to put it all together, then we'll start seeing the hand of God in a mighty way in our lives. Not until. Why would God give me anything special if I ain't willing to live up to what Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel? Now they had their time. Now it's my time to prove to myself what God has me to do, has me here for. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts here tonight. I pray that you'll bring us to our knees. I pray, Lord, that we'll worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray, Lord, that we'll serve you with a pure heart, fervently. I pray, Lord, that we'll get on these knees tonight, seeking your face, being honest, being honest with ourselves, being honest with you. I pray, Lord, to use us as you will, just taking you at your word. And in that, dear Lord, we begin to see this place grow in such a way that we couldn't even imagine. Thank you, dear Lord. I pray thy will be done in Christ's name. Amen. All stand what page, Brother John? Page 278. 278. 278. Why don't you come? Jesus is tenderly calling you home. Come on. Come on. Calling today. Calling today.
day. Why from the sunshine of love will you roll farther and farther away? Calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling, is tenderly calling today. Appreciate you being here, appreciate you listening. Technically, I think what Brother Don did tell was running from the law about that night, I think he was drunk. So, but y'all go out here tonight and... I don't want my brother getting in any trouble. He, it wasn't that he killed anybody or nothing like that. He didn't do anything criminal as far as that. But I think he'd been drunk and everything. But he said he's, he sure didn't want to go back to jail. And so he was running for the law that night. He swam on the other side of that river. And he did. He told me, he said, it's in Gaddis. He said, Brother Scott, in Gaddis out there. In Gaddis, get you. Uh, man, I love, love, love getting around him. He told, me, he told me many years ago, he said, Brother Scott, he said, man, you need to get down here. You need to get down in this bayou. You need to come down and see me down in the bayou. And everything. I said, and I don't know if I can hang with you or not, Brother Don. Yeah, y'all are some crazy dudes, man. <laughs> sure enough. But they good good folks. They love the Lord. And, you know, it's all we can ever ask out of anybody. Love the Lord. It makes all the difference in the world. I do appreciate you being here tonight. appreciate the opportunity. Isn't it good that God still sits on the throne? You know, I'm glad to leave it in the hands of the Lord, aren't you? In much better hands than mine. If it's in his hands, it'll turn out right. It sure will. It was good to see Brother Ed and Miss Kim come back and be, like they said, come home today. Amen. Sure enough. Brother Ed, if you will dismiss us in prayer tonight.